Tēnā nō rā koutou katoa i a tātou e tūhāha nei te mana o ngā hōia kua mene ki te pō. If you looked for the smallest, the most poignant and the most out of the way Anzac Day commemoration, you might just find it in Denmark. But it's not just about the day of Anzac. In one village, the children place flowers on an allied war grave every single day of the year. Joining me now are Brian and Diane Ramsey. They flew all the way from Nelson and only just made it to our Auckland studio here today. Brian and Diane, thank you very much for coming on our broadcast today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diane, let's start with you. Tell us about your uncle, Uncle Frank Wakefield Upton. Right, Frank Wakefield Upton was born in Christchurch in 1914. He was um, the fourth child of Isabel and Frederick Upton. And his uncle, also named Frank Wakefield Boucher, had been in the First World War and was killed, sadly. Um, Frank Upton enjoyed playing rugby, swimming, and he was a lifesaver at Taylor's Mistake in Christchurch before joining up to go overseas. He started off in Levin and then was posted to Canada where he did his training before going to England and on to Scotland before joining the 75th Squadron in Suffolk. And that's where he headed out for on the fateful night. So what was his job? He was an air bomber. Air bomber, mm. OK. Uh, and, and of course you said that fateful night. Yes. Can you uh, enlighten us further as to what happened? On April the 20th, being Hitler's birthday, the Allies thought they would make a big hit into Germany and 440 um, of them took off. And my uncle's plane was heading to Stuttgart to drop bombs on the... No, Rostock to hit drop bombs on the um, port there. When they got there, there was fog, like we had in Nelson this morning. They couldn't drop their bombs, and so they went further inland, dropped them, and on their way back over Denmark, um, they were hit by enemy fire and were um, hit the ground in Denmark. And it was at a small place called Boo Valley, which is very interesting because it was only 10k away from where his grandmother was actually born and lived before emigrating to New Zealand. And how many people were on the plane when it was shot down and, and how many people died? In that there were seven on the plane and all seven were killed. There were three from um, Great Britain. There was Earl, Town and Alice. And the New Zealanders were my uncle, Frank Wakefield Upton, and Cyril Thomas Cobb from the Thames, a little place called Bird in the Hand Hill. And there was Alan Tolley, and the other crew member was um, yeah. Ian Salt. And so you're here really today uh, doing some research, aren't you? You are trying to find all those families uh, of, of those people who died in the same crash as your uncle Frank? We are, yes. In um, 2013 we'd like to have a reunion at Boo Valley to commemorate 70 years of um, the crew losing their lives there. Brian, tell us about um, how people, if they know any information regarding any of those other people that were with Diane's uncle Frank, how they might be able to assist or even get in contact with you. Okay. What we'd really like them to do is get in touch through the Air Crew Remembrance Society, which is a, a UK-based website, and it's only made up of three guys, volunteers, who run it, and it's worldwide. And within days of setting up a web page for Frank and his crew, we had a, a strike from uh, the niece of town. And so that's a website that's really worth going to, and they can either go via that website or they can contact us on our own personal uh, email. And you want to give that email just very yes, quickly, yeah, just yeah, in case yeah. there are people watching okay. It's a dub, that's A-D-U-B, at connect.co.nz. Diane, you've been back, haven't you, uh, yes. to the site where the plane crashed, and you've seen uh, your uncle's um, gravesite as well, haven't you? We have. Um, in 1982, we just went to Esbia, where my uncle was buried, along with the rest of the crew. And then in 1998, we were very lucky to go back and the Danish people hosted us and we had 
a, a tremendous night. It was so humbling. We were expecting a, perhaps a dozen people there. There were over a hundred people. The whole town turned the out. The whole town turned out, and there was a strike at that stage. No petrol, but they still turned out. And I unveiled a memorial stone to the crew who were killed. Diane and Brian, thank you both very much for coming on the program. I wish you all the best with the research. Uh, hopefully there are families out there that may be able to give you some information regarding uh, your uncle's mates yeah. and those yes. who unfortunately met their deaths, obviously, in that crash. But thank you for coming on the program. Thank you, thank for you very much yeah. for inviting us. Thank, thank you. Akatiake Amongst the gallery of New Zealand VCs, Walter Callaway is often known as the Forgotten Warrior. It's believed that he was the first Māori to have travelled overseas to fight for his country.